Hey, welcome everybody to the New Jersey Globe Save Jersey debate between the candidates for the Republican nomination for state assembly in the 24th district. Lafayette's Board of Education President Josh Akins, Sussex County Commissioner Dawn Fantasia, Chester Mayor Mike Ganamort, and Warren County Commissioner Jason Sarnowski. Uh, I thank all of you for participating in this this vital discussion of ideas that will enable voters to compare your views and decide who might best represent them in the legislature. I am David Wildstein, the editor of the New Jersey Globe. Uh, Matt Rooney, the editor of Save Jersey, is joining me today to moderate uh, this important debate to, to determine who's going to fill two open seats in the state legislature, in the state assembly. Uh, the candidates have received the rules of this debate. The questions have been prepared by Matt and me, uh, and they have not been shared with any of the candidates in advance uh, because there's four candidates from two slates. And since we want to cover as many issues as possible, each question will be opposed to or, or will be posed to just one candidate from each ticket. Uh, each slate will have 60 seconds to answer. Uh, if a candidate's attacked, we'll offer an additional 30 seconds to the slate member who's answering uh, already, uh, and each ticket will get 90 seconds for opening and closing. Uh, I'll respectfully, respectfully the candidate uh, to uh, uh, to stick to their allotted time. Uh, I'll raise my hand with about 15 seconds remaining. That'll be a signal to wrap up your answer. If a candidate goes too long, I'll just I'll just hold my hand up. If that doesn't work, then I'll interrupt. And we've got a lot of ground to cover, so please uh, let's try to keep 60 seconds to. 60 seconds. Uh, just quickly, the role that Matt and I uh, want to play tonight is to be the moderator. Uh, we are not here to take sides or to offer our opinions. So we're going to do exactly that. We're going to moderate and we'll look to each of you to make sure that what your opponent, uh, what your opponent uh, says is based on fact. Uh, we conducted a coin to us before the debate uh, uh, that went to the the Aikens Sarnowski ticket. Uh, so Commissioner Fantasia will uh, give the first opening statement on behalf of her slate. Uh, and then Commissioner uh, Sarn, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Aikens uh, will give the second. And then we'll go into questions. Uh, so, Commissioner, we'll start with you. Thank you. Uh, good evening. And thank you to Matt and Save Jersey and David and uh, New Jersey Globe for sponsoring and moderating our debate tonight. Uh, my running mate, Mike and Ganimort, and I are looking forward to talking about our proven conservative records and why we are the best candidates to carry on the legacy of Senator Steve Oroho and Assemblyman Hal Wirths. I'll take this opportunity to note that both of our opponents sought out Senator Oroho's endorsement, praised his conservative legacy in Trenton, and wanted his endorsement desperately. He instead chose to endorse me and Mike. So did our current Senate running mate and Senator-to-be, Parker Space. Parker has consistently been one of the most conservative legislators in Trenton for a decade, and we're honored to run on his ticket. Together, we'll ensure that the 24th Legislative District has the most conservative representation in Trenton. My name is Dawn Fantasia, and I'm a middle school principal for a New Jersey public charter school. I'm a current two-term Sussex County Commissioner and a former Franklin Borough Council President, and I'm the mother of three. My running mate, Mike Ganimort, is a former aide to Republican Congressman Scott Garrett and the current mayor of Chester Township. He and his wife, Lauren, have three beautiful young daughters. And together, we'll fight to repeal the radical woke school curriculum and protect our children, mandate voter ID at the polls to restore election integrity, and Murphy's liberal sanctuary state policies, defend our Second Amendment rights, and vote to protect the lives of unborn babies oppose wasteful spending to get our fair share from Trenton to District 24 in this often forgotten corner of Northwestern New Jersey, crack down on crime and illegal drugs and stand with our police. Thank you and we look forward to a spirited debate. Thank you, we'll go to Mr. Akins. Good evening, Matt and Dave. Uh, thank you for having us tonight. We really do appreciate it and giving us a chance to address the voters of the 24th district. My name is Josh Akins and this is my running mate, Jason Sarnowski. Jason is a father first and foremost. That's what he is, is near and dear to his heart. He's an engineer, a Warren County commissioner, and has been a champion for the taxpayer for many years. 
Jason has consistently cut taxes, reduced spending, and eliminated debt in Warren County. Jason is a proven conservative who has protected our constitutional rights, <clears throat> worked to create safer communities, and fought for our rights and our schools to protect our children. I am Josh Higgins. I'm a Lafayette School I'm Board member. I'm, I'm an executive director of the Sussex County Republican Committee. I have held the line on our school budget for many years. During COVID, we were one of the few school districts in the entire state that had in-person learning right away. I have been a grassroots advocate for many years as well, leading an organization called Arise NJ. This has been uh, phenomenal since we've seen hundreds of school board candidates uh, win, win their elections based upon the efforts of our organization. Jason and I are running to reduce waste, spending, and lower, and lower our taxes, protect our parents and the rights of our schools, and protect our families and our communities. We are real proven conservatives in this race. We have shown that we can, we're more than just talking points. This election is about the future of the Republican Party, not about any sort of identity. <clears throat> Do what, we don't want any insiders. We're the outside candidates. We're here for the voters, not for endorsements. And that's all that matters to us. So thank you. And we look forward to the rest of this debate. Thank you. And we'll start with Matt's going to ask a question of uh, Mr. Akins and, and Mayor and Ganimore will, uh, will respond. Thank you, David. And thank you, candidates, for joining us. Uh, Mr. Akins, Governor Murphy's radical sex ed standards that were recently implemented have stirred passions and debate in all 21 counties. What role, if any, do you believe public schools have in teaching children about topics including sexual orientation, and if public schools do have a role in this arena, what is the appropriate age to introduce these concepts? Thank you, Matt. That, uh, that question is actually quite appropriate since I had two of the people that I'm helping down in Roxbury Township on Fox tonight, they're being sued for questioning the books that are being published in their library. What has happened is they have taken sex ed and they have completely bastardized what, it, what was meant originally. Learning about sex ed and learning about hygiene and the human body was meant for the grades and the ages where that was actually happening. What is going on now is they've pushed that down so low that th what they're going to do is they're going to fundamentally change the youth of America and fundamentally change the youth of the, the states. So... What we're looking for, what we have been looking for, what I've been talking to parents across this entire state is they want each school to make their own choices. They don't want this stuff to be forced upon their own districts in areas and sections of this state where it's not important, where it's not an issue. I mean, I have two very young boys right now, and I'll tell you right now, I, I, this is not even something that's on their mind. I know you're a father as well, Matt, as is Mike. We have young children, and this is not something that they need to be learning at this moment. High school, this is a conversation where schools can be teaching sex ed. But the what is happening now is it's not even just sex ed, right? Some of these books and some of these topics and discussions that are being pushed have nothing to do with literacy, have nothing to do with health. It has everything to do with an agenda which will completely reshape the American public. Thank you. Mayor and Gannamore. Thank you, Matt, and thank you, David. It's a pleasure to be with you all tonight. Um, Phil Murphy's extreme sex ed curriculum is totally inappropriate. We have jumped the shark if we can shoehorn this salacious material into our classrooms because we think it argue or we argue that it has some shred of educational value. Putting students and teachers in a, in a funny position, it's totally inappropriate. We're taking conversations away from the kitchen table and away from the parents. We're having these conversations outside the eye of the parents. Here's what I would allow reproduction in the context of human biology. Anything above and beyond that is politics. It does not belong in the classroom. Stop it with the genders. Stop conveying the message that gender is optional or a choice to be made in a classroom of all places. And stop it with mixing boys and girls in sports. Thank you. Uh, my question, my first question is going to be for uh, Commissioner Fantasia. Mr. Akins will, uh, will respond to it. Uh, all four candidates in this race are pro-life, but as, as you all well know, there's varying degrees to limits. In Florida, Governor DeSantis has signed a, 
a six week abortion ban. Senator Ed Durr has a bill that sets New Jersey's ban at 12 weeks. Congressman Chris Smith uh, has proposed a federal ban at 15 weeks. Congressman Kane last year uh, said he would ban abortion at 20 weeks. And my question to you is, is where are you on that span of, of, uh, of zero to, to the end of a pregnancy? Thank you for the question. Um, well, I believe that uh, life begins at conception. Uh, I've been endorsed by New Jersey Right to Life before. Um, what I can say is what New Jersey has is one of the most egregious Wild West approaches to abortion. On October 8th, 2020, the Reproductive Freedom Act was signed by Governor Murphy. And as a commissioner on the Sussex County Commissioner Board, we immediately fired off a resolution in opposition to it. Um, not only does it stay along the same lines uh, prior where parental notification is not necessary, it pushed it, it doubled down. So now uh, girls can have abortions uh, by medical providers who are not even licensed physicians. Uh, we are actually offering free abortions to those who travel here from out of state. So New Jersey's in a sad spot. We could not even get across the line, uh, the pain capable act that was the 20 week ban. So what Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is doing at six weeks is logical to me. It's at the point of heartbeat. Um, and I think we would have a better chance moving the needle that way. I personally do believe though that life does, be does begin at conception. Thank you, Mr. Reagan. Yeah, I, I too believe that life began conception with without any exceptions outside of that. Um, my running mate right here has been endorsed for the New Jersey Right to Life as recent as 2022. So, you know, we are very conservative in that regard. Um, I do believe that because of the state of New Jersey, with the Democrats having a stronghold in both the Senate and the Assembly, if we can move the needle back, it is certainly the step in the right direction. However, it's not all the way there. Because, you know, we are, we are, it's infanticide, in my opinion. And what Governor Murphy has done is completely egregious. It's against the Constitution. It is against every belief that we have as a Judeo-Christian society. And right now, you know, we, we, can't, we can't continue along this path. So, you know, anything that we can do to move the needle backwards would be a step in the right direction. But I, I too, believe that, you know, life begins at conception and there's no, there's no, exception to that and it, you know so you know it would have been nice though to know that you know our commissioners in this county our commissioners in every other county did more than just resolutions you know we had there was protests everywhere i didn't see a lot of them out there and i wish that we saw a lot more protests happening thank you this next question is going to start with commissioner sarnowski and then commissioner fantasia you'll follow up in high-tax New Jersey, public sector unions like the NJEA and the CWA wield extraordinary influence in our elections and in the halls of power. Back in 2011, Wisconsin, under then-Governor Scott Walker, moved to tackle that state's broken finances by dramatically limiting collective bargaining between local governments and their public employee unions. Would New Jersey be wise to pursue similar reforms at this juncture in our own history? Thank you, Matt. Uh, thank you for uh, asking that question. You know, that's a great question. In Warren County, we've always negotiated fairly with our uh, public employee unions. And that's made the difference between our employees being able to live with a living wage, be able to feed their families, be able to afford to this high tax state and them living on welfare. Unfortunately, in other counties, we don't see counties negotiating fairly. We don't see us, you know, uh, our, our elected officials working to make sure that our blue collar workers have a fair living wage. Um, and so I believe we have to make sure that look, look what's going on right now at Rutgers. We're paying uh, some, you know, athletic people, uh, coaches, millions of dollars, and the teachers are striking. We need fair 
negotiating tactics with our employee unions. But at the same time, we can't give control up to special interests. We've seen what happens with the Integ Election Integrity Act. That is going to now give dark money a lot of strength and a lot of negotiating power in back rooms with elected officials. And they're only going to get stronger. And now unions will have more negotiating power. So we have to have people that will stand up for both the taxpayer and the working class citizen. And that's what I'll do. Thank you. Commissioner Fantasia. Um, thank you. I do agree uh, with with one point that uh, Commissioner Sarnowski said, is that you need to have the right people in the seats to be able to negotiate. I remember entering uh, the Sussex County at that time board, board of freeholders, and we were walking into a very, very hostile environment between um, the elected officials and uh, the administration, upper management, and the uh, the working uh, working staff, the blue collar. And uh, what we found was negotiations were critical. Um, egos had to be left at the door. And we don't see that. Uh, New Jersey is being choked out by groups like the NJEA. I am a uh, school principal in a public charter school, and we are not unionized. Uh, what I can say is I've seen that when unions do yield too much power, public unions wield too much power, uh, what happens is we end up with drag queen story hour. We end up with all kinds of special interest nonsense coming into our schools, indoctrinating our children, they simply uh, wield way too much power. Uh, we might have a gubernatorial candidate coming up who is uh, a lead figure in the Democrat Party and uh, the NJEA. This is very, very dangerous ground. The tail wags the dog. So uh, I think some reforms would be necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Our, the next question is going to start with Mayor Ganimore and then go to Commissioner Sarnowski. Uh, citing concerns about Chinese companies buying up American farms. Uh, Senator Doug Steinhardt from next door 23rd district has introduced legislation that would prohibit any foreign ownership of New Jersey farmland. Uh, would you vote for this bill? And and are you concerned that some of your constituents might uh, might be missing out on on a, maybe a higher bidder for their for their farm? <laughs> That's not the way to look at it. If the higher bidders, China, count me out. Uh, I will not only vote for Senator Steinhardt's bill, I'll sponsor it in the assembly. We should not be allowing China uh, to buy up American farmland, whether it's in New Jersey or elsewhere, especially when it's near an American military base, because that is, at the end of the day, their goal here. Uh, it's totally inappropriate, should not be allowed. I think it's a brilliant idea. Uh, when we talk about farmland, this one hits close to home. I'm the mayor of Chester. Approximately half of our 31 square miles is preserved open space, much of it farmland all of it in the Highlands region. I am concerned that the state of New Jersey's control on our municipality and much of Northwest New Jersey through the Highlands Act puts us at greater risk of this land being purchased by China. I think the right to own this land and make decisions about when, how, and to whom to sell that land to should be the landowner and no one else. Thank you, Commissioner Sharnowski. Yeah, I'm going to go one step further with this, Dave. So Warren County passed a resolution supporting Senator Steinhardt's uh, bill. Uh, we fully support not selling land to foreign interests that, ha that are unfavorable to the United States, especially uh, countries like China. And Warren County, you know, we do preserve a lot of land. We buy land and sell it back after it's been preserved. We say we will. We also said that we're not going to sell preserved land to foreign interest and far. Uh, so so we've went one step forward further and said that we are not going to do it in Warren County. That actually does in a manner buy and sell land through our preservation program. Um, so I am completely in support of that. I think we have to be defensive of what we do in this state and we have to watch out because there's other areas where we're under attack by foreign interests uh, coming into the state. We've seen China, uh, you know, they, they've opened up police stations all over our country. What are we doing to protect New Jersey from that? And that's what we need to be, be sure of. We need to we need to uh, assure ourselves that we're not allowing foreign interests to take too much of a control of our country. Thank you. And Matt, before you go on, just if I could remind everybody, mute your cell phones. We're getting some feedback and, and maybe that'll that'll help us. Uh, unless Matt thinks it's former former freeholder Zioli who's who's giving the feedback. I don't know. <laughs> 
This many politicians. We don't need more of us, right? <laughs> this next question is going to start with Commissioner Fantasia, and then the follow-up is going to be Commissioner Sarnowski. Commissioner, a recent analysis determined that one in three New Jersey roads are in poor condition. That was the second worst rating in the United States behind only Rhode Island. This concerning news comes a full seven years after a bipartisan compromise that dramatically increased New Jersey's gas tax with the purported goal of fixing our roads and our bridges. Do you believe that this Christie era compromise holds up in the benefit of hindsight? And do you believe that any additional action is necessary at this juncture to address the state's ongoing infrastructure woes? Okay, so thank you. Um, I'm going to take this time, since we're on this topic, to just uh, reiterate for the audience that I was a councilwoman in Franklin Borough in 2016. I did not actually get to vote on this issue. Uh, the TTF was bankrupt as a result of politicians kicking that can down the road year after year. And uh, the cost to taxpayers was a projected $500 property tax increase on the average homeowner. And the Democrats proposed 50 cents a gallon of gas for our gas tax, tax additional on top of the price of a gallon. So if you're asking me about Senator Oroho's tax restructuring plan and Chris Christie's uh, approval of that, that reduced that to 23 cents a gallon with no impact on property taxes. And we were able to collect some funds from out of state drivers. Um, we provided relief, tax relief to senior citizens, to veterans, uh, to the working poor, phased out the estate tax. But more importantly, when you say that road study, I read the same road study that was just released and rural roads surprisingly have moved up the list, not where we want it, but the rural roads up in District 24 have moved up the list in improvement. So Sussex County alone has re received $30.4 million from that and our municipality is 23 million. In this upcoming year, every year Warren County receives anywhere between four and 5 million. And in this budget cycle, they're proposed to receive $4.1 uh, million. So, um, uh, you know, again, do I think that the Transportation Trust Fund uh, was a benefit to the property tax owner, uh, property owner? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I do want to mention something. We're going over a little bit. But... Thank Pardon you. Pardon me? Just give me extra over. time, Dave. I'll let her speak. Give me extra time. <laughs> so am I, yeah, am I continuing? Why not? How about for 15 more seconds? How's that? Okay. So uh, what I want to say is that, you know, we do have some politicians like Mr. Sarnowski, who was a huge advocate of the gas tax, said that kept Warren County taxes under what they were supposed to be. There was going to be a 5% increase. There wasn't because of it. Bats himself on the back for a reduction of property tax, yet is not exactly truthful about the uh, revenue and where it came from. And it came Thank from the gas tax, which he fully supported. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Commissioner. Commissioner Sarnarski, your response. Your response. Matt, thank you very much Matt. for this question. Finally, we're getting to the meat of what makes this team different from the Inganamore Fantasia team. Um, I totally oppose the former gas tax. It was a complete failure. We know that roads got worse and our taxes got higher. Um, it we went from one of what the ninth worst roads in the state to the worst or the second worst roads. And we went from one of the lowest gas taxes in the country to the highest gas taxes. The problem is we spend too much per mile of road. We spend $1.2 million dollars. Uh, per mile of state road versus New York or California with, you know, these big states who spend 900,000, 750 because of waste, fraud and abuse that we allow into the system. And rather than cutting spending and looking at that waste, fraud and abuse, we just want to keep feeding the beast, keep feeding the gas tax union, the 825. And Dawn says, oh, I was only a councilwoman. Yeah, but she did a radio ad advocating the gas tax. If she was just a councilwoman, why even bother? You didn't have a stake in that. Um, so she did a radio ad. She did a robocall advocating the gas tax. And I'm glad to finally hear Dawn admit she likes the gas tax and she's going to like next year's reauthorization of the gas tax, which is going to be bigger and badder. And let's face it, the gas tax is taxation without representation. Why? Because the gas tax doesn't need a vote by the legislature to go up. It could go up without any representative voting for it. That is just bad news. And what are we looking at in the future when we don't have gas? Because
because electric vehicles, black boxes in our cars, a track we go so that we they know mile by mile how many miles we travel in New Jersey. Now, it's not going to happen for out-of-state cars because how are you going to do that? But in-state, that's what's going to happen. Thanks. Rebuttal, please. I'm sorry? 30 seconds, please. Rebuttal. Yeah, yeah, that's what we said. You could have 30 seconds since, since it involved you, and then we'll go back to Mr. Sarnowski. Okay. Well, Mr. Sarnowski, you can't have it both ways. You wanted to run with Senator Orho, even endorsed him. And if that was the case, would we be calling you gas tax Jason right now? Because I guarantee your mouth would be shut. You've had your hand out to these unions. All you have to do is check your ELEC reports. And you have been a supporter of different unions. You have asked them for their support. You've taken money in the past. So uh, all these antics, uh, you know, it's all histronics and it's nonsense. You supported it. And, and I suppose you'd be happy if Warren County wrote back that $4.1 million to the state of New Jersey and you give back your veterans deductions and you can give back the deductions for senior citizens. And by the way, stop lying in your commercial that I support the black boxes. As a matter of fact, last night at our commissioner meeting, I introduced paired legislation that's gonna go pair with Parker Spaces legislation that actually opposes black box and tracking of drivers in the state of New Jersey. Get your facts right before you go on the radio, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sarnowski, I'll give you the last word. You have 30 seconds. Please don't go any more than 45. Thank you, Dawn. Or thank you, uh, Dave. So Dawn's completely wrong here. Just because I didn't fight, uh, you know, Steve Orho was who was our Senate pre uh, minority leader at the time, or Senate leader at the time, because I was, you know, because we use that tax as it was meant to be used. It was used to reduce taxes for the taxpayers. And you know what? Even if we didn't have it, I would have found another way to reduce taxes because that's what I do in Warren County. Dawn's talking about, you know, everyone wanting to run with Senator Orho. Of course, we all wanted to be assembly people. If we were going to run with the incumbent senator, I think we all would have run. And it wouldn't have been about the gas tax necessarily. But you know what? We have to show the difference between our opponents. Dawn Fantasia is advocating for the gas tax. There has been no... Uh, you know, quid pro quo with me and unions, that's ridiculous. And I'd like her to show me where that exists. Thank you. Be happy to. Mr. Akins, I'm going I'm to shift to a, a question that's been in the national news uh, for the last week. Uh, Commissioner Fantasia, you'll get the response on this. The Texas Senate passed the bill that requires a copy of the Ten Commandments be displayed in every public school classroom. Should New Jersey pass that bill? And, and if, if so, would you vote for it? <clears throat> so should New Jersey pass that bill? I think that if we had the ability to do so, I would support it such as that. Um, I have nothing wrong with the Ten Commandments. I have nothing wrong with the beliefs in them. And I would like to know where where there's something wrong that's being said in there, where there's tents and other religions that don't believe in what the Ten Commandments actually portray. So, you know, I would definitely support that. And what Texas did, however, is Texas's business. If New Jersey doesn't want to move to such a thing, then that's New Jersey's business to do so. I think each state needs to work independently of each other. But we knew, do, do should and look to other states to see what they're doing, which is working well. Uh, to say that the Ten Commandments is a, is a priority, I don't, I don't believe that's a priority in New Jersey. We have high taxes. We have schools that are a mess right now. We have roads that are disasters. And realistically, that would be not really uh, an issue for me that is high priority. Commissioner? Uh, being a middle school principal, I would have absolutely no problem with that. I think uh, a lot of Americans get it wrong when we discuss the separation of church and state. It does not mandate the separation. It says do not stifle anyone's ability to practice their religion. So I see no problem in that being displayed in, in a public school. Uh, it definitely... Um, enforces a strong moral code. It displays a strong moral code. Um, I have zero problem with it at all, and I would support that. Do I think that'll ever happen in the state of New Jersey? I'm not holding my breath, but if uh, Republicans take the majority, there's a shot. Thank you. This next question this is next going question to is start with Mayor Ganimore, and then Mr. Akins, you'll get the response. Hey, Matt, yeah. Matt, before you go, can you tell whoever has their phone not on vibrate to put it on vibrate or something? The the dinging is quite, quite annoying. You hear a ding? Yeah. yeah. I hear it also, yeah. Also a Thank ding? David. Whoever has it, I know that I'm on mute. I'm on mute. It. Okay, perfect. There you <laughs> go again. Yeah. There we go Sorry. again. That's All good. right. 
Well, just stay on mute if you're not if you're not responding. Um, so, Mayor in Gannamore, Disney and the DeSantis administration are presently locked in a high stakes legal and public relations war that has garnered major national attention and raised questions about the relationship between corporations and the government. Governor DeSantis says he's battling corporate welfare and the excesses of woke. Disney, which is increasingly a leader uh, in producing woke content in this country, says it's being unfairly targeted. Who's correct? Yeah, I, thanks for the question, Matt. Uh, I'd have to side with Governor DeSantis on this and a number of things that he's been pushing for down in Florida. Uh, don't tell my daughters, but I think Disney has jumped the shark on a lot of the cultural issues. I wish if they'd get back to the basics, some of the classic movies uh, and leave the cultural uh, fights of the day to somebody else, that would be much preferred. Um, I want to take this time to comment on a broader topic, which has been a very tired and untruthful attack from Josh and Jason in their campaign blog regarding this ESG nonsense. Um, you know, it's the height of irony coming from Jason Sarnowski to say that I do anything related to ESG, which I do not, one, not one iota. I don't have the skills for it, the interest for it, uh, nor the values. When Jason Sarnowski works for a company like Disney, its first energy corporation out in Ohio, uh, that has an eight-page ESG report that says that ESG values inform their company's decision-making from top to bottom. They even train employees like Jason on how to limit their microaggressions and learn better allyship. I want to know how Jason's microaggression training has gone at JCPNL and whether it has interrupted their work connecting the wind turbines down the Jersey shore to New Jersey's electric grid. Okay, so at David, this point, do I get a response since that was uh, directed at me? Uh, the, so the way we outlined it in the in the debate rules is is uh, this will be Mr. Agins's time to respond, so he he can respond on your behalf. We're a team; it's fine. I got okay. you. <laughs> Thanks. All right, so uh, I'm going to read this uh, verbatim because I want everyone to be very clear about what I'm reading and where I'm reading it from, Mike. Our specialized ESG practice advises companies on environmental social and governance strategy, reporting and disclosures, and thought leadership. <clears throat> there are two partners listed on this company, Matthew Barnes and Michael and Ganimore. That's ASG partnership. So what happened with this is we found that this was happening. We realized that Mike was working for this. And um, he's threading the needle by saying he's not an ESG investor. No, Mike, you're not an ESG investor. You're an ESG consultant. And you correct policies... No, you can say all you want. You scrubbed your website. You literally scrubbed your website after we found it. Mike, yes. is, is is that quote, was that quote on your webpage? Was still that is, Josh. Your, it's no, it still is. Still is. Still is. You might need some, so you might need better. So Mike, you have nothing to do with ESG, but there's two partners in ESG, in ASG, your company. It's you and Matt Barnes. So you profit off of ESG directly. Not, and you can change your head correct. all you want. You can use analogies like, Oh, this is a law firm and I do this side and they do that side. That's absolute utter rubbish. And you know it. You know it because this is this is polling so poorly across the nation. You realize that Governor DeSantis, former President Trump, every single Republican leader in the entire country has come out and spoken against ESG, the very policies your company pushes. You shake uh, your head if you want. I don't there, care. There, there was almost website. nothing. There was almost nothing in that answer that was uh, in, that was correct, nor did it include an answer to my question, which was how did Jason's ESG training go uh, and, and how's he doing with the microaggressions? I felt a few just This is there. your webpage, Mike. I work at a business webpage. consulting firm called American Strategy Group, where I lead a practice that provides communication support for philanthropic foundations. This work has focused most recently on... Uh, uh, pursuing a charitable deduction on state income taxes. We've been working with Steve Oroho on this for many years. When I am in the assembly, I want to get that over the line. As I said before, I don't touch ESG one iota. Don't have the interest in it. It's not part of my work. It is not part of any compensation that I get as part of the firm. You can say it is. It's incorrect. It's false. It doesn't fit sure. the keyboard warriors working for your campaign. I did hey, use some Mike, Mike, there's no keyboard warriors here. Mike, there's no keyboard warriors. This is my time. This is my time. Excuse me. Your this company's is my time. Do you take okay, okay, everyone. Just one. Literally your company's webpage, bud. Excuse me. Is, this is my time. Thank you very much. 
I previously did political work at American Strategy Group for Congressman Scott Garrett. I was his only two-time campaign manager. My favorite political client, my favorite client at American Strategy Group, Jason Sarnowski. As I said before, and that was eight, uh, maybe five or six years ago, Jason can explain that one to folks, why he hired American Strategy Group to work for him. Uh, you can share what we charged, I suppose. I'm still Dave, looking for an answer well, about well, Jason's well, salary, because... pension, and health benefits coming from a company with an eight-page ESG report that trains employees like Jason on microaggressions and allyship. So I let's, let's do this, answer, because this can't. is obviously... Let's do this. This is obviously a, a, a hot issue here, and I want to give it the right amount of time. Why don't we let Commissioner Sarnowski uh, go for another 30 seconds, and then uh, and then we'll ask Commissioner Fantasia to close it up so we can keep the balance uh, of, the, of, of this debate between the candidates. So, Commissioner, why don't you go for 30 seconds on that? So, Dave, here's how you know the difference between somebody who works for a company and somebody who owns a company and has a leadership stake in it. When Mike I brought that out, up last week, it was still on the website. When he, It's still on the website today. It's going to be there tomorrow. It'll be there a month from now. You know why? Because I have no governance of what I do. Just like a lot of linemen, meter readers, and a lot of people who work for companies that maybe they don't agree with everything. I love my company. I love what I do for a living. And I love doing it. When The day we brought this up, and quite frankly, this isn't our issue. This was Donald Trump's issue. This was Ron DeSantis's issue. The day we brought it up, though, with Mike and Gamert, the next day, it was off his website. Okay, so Commissioner, no, yeah. we'll give you 30 seconds and then, then we're going to move on to the next question. You're, on, you, mute. you're on mute. mute. Uh, Commissioner, you're on mute. You're on mute still. You're on mute still. Got it. But thank you for muting. Um, I can say that the Sussex County Board of County Commissioners did uh, pass a resolution opposing ESG specifically uh, for, for any decision making in uh, our, our day to day business. Uh, but I would like to say, speaking of scrubbing websites, I do know that there were some tweaks uh, made to further clarify on uh, the Mike's company's website, but I'm very interested to know where the Arise NJ website went. Seems when we started asking questions about finances for Arise NJ that Josh is so proud of, you can't find hide nor hair of Arise NJ uh, to go through. So um, not only has something changed, it's just gone. So okay. question gonna, you wanna know. Yeah, we have to, let, let's let Mr. Akins go 30 seconds, sure. please. Around 30 15 seconds. Seconds. Uh, seconds. Okay. I resigned in December, I so I don't know December, what happened so to that I organization. Think. There was a board at the time. I'm not a part of it. So you can go take it up with them. Thank you. All right. The next question will be for Commissioner Sarnowski and, and Mayor in Ganimort. Uh, we'll respond to it. Uh, the New Jersey Supreme Court heard a case this week concerning a private school teacher who was fired for having premarital sex. And my question is not about religious liberty. Uh, this question is about local government home rule. Uh, would you support a decision uh, by a majority of elected public school board members that would set a policy, a local policy, to prohibit teachers from having premarital sex? So, Commissioner, we'll start with you. Thank you, David. Um, no, I don't think so. I think this is a matter of individual rights and individual liberty. And you have the right to do what you want with your body. Uh, I'm going to bring this to vaccines. Um, you know, we didn't mandate vaccines in Warren County. Why? You have a right to do what you want with your body uh, when it comes to that, those kinds of things. I may not agree with your choices. I may not like your choices. I don't want government to pay for your choices, but you have those right to those choices. And so this gets back to individually, individual liberty and your right to life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness, your right to uh, practice religion as you wish. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, our individual liberties. So I don't think it's right for any government to tell another person, uh, you know, in, in that case, uh, how they can act, as long as it's not violating the rights of individuals within, you know, other individuals. And I think that's where the difference is in our schools when you see the LGBTQ agenda and you see the, uh, you, you know, the health and human, uh, the health and uh, reproductive uh, standards uh, education, there you're infiltrating your beliefs onto me. That's not right. And I don't believe in that. Thank you, Mayor. 
Yeah, I'm not so much interested what teachers are doing in their own bedroom. I'm far more interested uh, to know what they're doing in the classroom. Uh, that's why when I'm in the assembly, I will introduce the Parents' Bill of Rights. It enshrines in the law that parents and guardians have a fundamental right to direct the education of their child. Other states have this. North Carolina passed it. Uh, recently, New Jersey should have it as well. It does four things. It affirms that parents have a right to a summary of the curriculum in the schools, a right to review that curriculum, a right to review the textbooks and other assigned materials, and a right to opt their child out of objectionable, objectionable curriculum. Senator Bucco is the sponsor of this bill in the Senate, and he's supporting Parker Space, Don Fantasia, and Mike Ganimort because he knows we'll sponsor that same bill in the Assembly. Thank you. This next question is for Mr. Akins, and then Commissioner Fantasia will have the opportunity to respond. The Garden State hosts, as we know, odd year legislative elections with the espoused goal of prioritizing state issues. But election 2024's first GOP primary debate is only a few months away. Federal politics is going to inevitably impact our 2023 elections. So with that in mind, are you prepared to support Donald Trump's comeback bid, or do you believe it's time to consider a new Republican standard bearer? <clears throat> so yeah, uh, federal, gov federal government. Um, okay, so I, I will support uh, former President Trump and his re-election bid. I am liking some of the new candidates that I'm hearing. I think he has inspired a lot of new Republican leaders throughout, not just in the federal level, but throughout New Jersey itself. And because of that, we're hearing a lot more conservative values being espoused in public forum. And, and so for that, I support him in his effort. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Fantasia. Thank you. Um, I thought that Donald Trump uh, actually was the best president that we've had in modern times when it came to policy, specifically foreign policy. Um, I did support him in 2016 and 2020. Um, I would be open to supporting him again, but there are other candidates in the field who are strong and emerging. So I'll be interested to see how it develops. But the top two front runners, I would be very happy uh, with either of them if they were the nominee. I can say it's refreshing to hear Josh Aiken say that he is sticking with Team R as a Republican. We do know that in 2008, he did vote for Barack Obama, which was a little bit disheartening to find out from, uh, you know, from a candidate who I thought was uh, somewhat more on the conservative side. But election integrity is going to be an important one this time. Uh, we also do know that, you know, while we, we have situations where sometimes you're registered in two states, for instance, Mr. Akins was a registered Democrat in Pennsylvania for over 10 years while he was a registered Republican here in New Jersey. So, you know, I do take a little pause to that. I think we really need to take a look at um, our election integrity, clean those voter rolls. I'd be a little remiss to send somebody to the state assembly who wants to clean that up, who actually was part of the problem for over a decade. I, I, I guess I'm going to address this, Matt. You yes. have 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was 24 that year. It's a weird thing is I had my first Bud Light that year. So uh, to add to this accusation that I was a registered Democrat in Pennsylvania for 10 years, I never lived in Pennsylvania. So I don't know what to tell you about that one. So the, the difference between myself and Commissioner Fantasia is – I may have made a mistake one time. <clears throat> However, I'm not trying to push Barack Obama type of policies throughout the state of New Jersey. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, my next question, I'll start with Commissioner Fantasia. Commissioner Sarnowski will uh, uh, will get the, the, the second uh, half of this. Uh, what do you believe the role of state government should be? Uh, in New Jersey? And, and do you think it's time for a conversation about eliminating county government in the state? Well, thank you. That's a very, very broad question. Um, well, you know, with uh, the ruling um, where the Supreme Court returned uh, the decision to for abortion to the states, I think that was just another powerful reminder of states' rights. Um, as far as eliminating um, county government. No, I don't believe we should eliminate county government. And here's why. I've uh, had the experience both at the municipal level 
and at the county level. And there are functions that are done at a wider, uh, broader scale that can only be done at the county level. It's not appropriate, especially in our rural areas like uh, Sussex County, where 565 square miles by land, about 144,000 people. And there are a lot of services that need to be shared because we have so many people who do live in such rural areas. Um, I learned so very much um, being the liaison to the health department at the county through the COVID crisis and really figuring out how to get some of these integral mental health services uh, to individuals and all the different counties, specifically health-based programs, programs for veterans. Uh, it's not sustainable to have run at a municipal level. And we've seen how the state health department absolutely bungled COVID-19 to the point where, you know, we found 17 bodies stacked in a nursing home in Sussex County and Andover Township. I do not trust the state of New Jersey to manage that. More control needs to be given over to the counties, quite frankly, to be able to best serve and manage their population with proper funding. Thank you. Commissioner Sharnowski. Yeah, the, the role of government should absolutely be very limited. And I think that's always been the purpose of government and it needs to be limited and follow the rule, the rights and the, uh, and the law of people and who people want to see represent them. We have a representative democracy. That's what the role of government is. It's to provide for the life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, um, not to overstep. And quite frankly, we've constantly overstepped in this state to violate those rights and, and the right of our life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Um, I believe that county government is absolutely essential because I think it's one of the most responsible and responsive form of governments to the people. As a matter of fact, I would roll up more responsibility to county government because it, it it's it's almost like a larger shared service. It's a larger and and you know more responsive government for the people. Um, and quite frankly, in Warren County, we've done more good as county commissioners than a lot of municipalities can say. Uh, completely eliminated debt in Warren County, practically. Uh, you know, lower taxes consistently. That's kind of thing that you can do as a county government. And we see we have too many municipalities here, don't want to consolidate. And when we're trying to work together, county government's the one that gets people together. So I don't see reducing county government at all. Thank you. Matt, if it's okay, I, I want to ask a follow-up and then I'll, you, you'll you go the next two. Uh, and, and so we'll, we'll do this with, we'll start with Mayor and Gatamore and then with Mr. Akins. Uh, the 24th district has 32 municipalities. Uh, of those 32, 25 of them have less than 8,400 people. So we've had a mention here about shared services. I, I'd like, I'd like to hear a little bit more about your your views of sh shared services. What's, you know, how it how it should be done. How you you might ask whether it should be mandatory or whether it should be optional by municipalities. And and I want to throw one other thing at both of you, which is which is uh, uh, to justify why Wapak. Uh, in your district with a population of seven people, justify why it ought to exist. So we'll start with Mayor in Gannamore. Sure. Um, whether shared services are mandatory or not, they just make sense. So shame on any municipality or county that's not already pursuing them. Um, what I've done in Western Morris County was found an organization of Western Morris County municipalities that came together once a month to talk about new shared services we could create to deliver a return for the taxpayer. Under my leadership, we now have expanded our shared municipal court to include three towns. We now share our animal control services. We now share our DPW equipment. Um, it's not the most exciting or sexy part of government, but it saves taxpayer dollars. Um, the Chesters, I'm the mayor of Chester Township, share nearly everything. Schools, first aid, fire, uh, you name it. And we, we realize tremendous savings as a result. Um, when Jason talks about uh, the efficiencies of county government, I think he's forgetting that he is this campaign's tax hike champion. No one running for this office, no one contemplating this office, no one holding this office has raised taxes as many times as Jason Sarnowski, seven times. How do you do well, something Mike, maybe like you need a full term during, before you can during government a too long. Jason promised to but serve I, two I terms on the one county to board. He's well, wait, let him finish. 35. That's yeah. how you raise taxes. It's Jason Sarnowski's example. So this is Mr. Akins's time, so he can he can answer it or we can go back later. So Mr. Akins, okay. it's your turn. Um, 
I think shared service is fantastic. Our school district is one of the smaller school districts in the county, and we leverage shared services at, at every every possible way. It's the only way a small district and a small municipality is going to stay afloat without putting an extreme burden on their taxpayers. On top of that, because of the way Sussex County at least operates, a lot of our communities are very tight knit communities. You know, we may be Lafayette over here, they may be Hardest or Hamburg over there, but we have a lot of connections to each other. And sharing our services allows for that that culture to continue to breed. So uh, I'll, I'll give Jason the rest of my time because he was sort of attacked here, um, and I, I think it's it's only right that he has an opportunity to rebut. Is that all right? Are That's okay, and we'll, and we'll go to Commissioner Fantasia also, and we'll we'll get everybody covered here. So Dave, thirty seconds, but. Uh, you know, Mike and Gannamore, this is ridiculous. Warren County is the most well-run county in the state, and that's a fact. We have almost no debt, and I consistently reduce taxes. Five-cent tax rate reduction this year. Mike and Gannamore is finding new ways to tax the residents of Chester Township. He did a $400 garbage tax in his town just so he could remove money from his budget to free up money so he could raise taxes even higher in Chester Township. That's including all the past raises now in taxes when he was a council president. Mike and Ganimort has never seen a tax he won't raise, and he's killing the town of Chester. Maybe Mike and Ganimort should concentrate on being mayor of Chester Township and finishing the job he did there rather than running to ruin something else. And let's go to uh, Commissioner Fantasia, and then Mayor Ganimore will come back to you since you were sure. attacked. Thanks a lot. Uh, shared services. I am a big fan of shared services. Uh, Franklin Borough actually is a part of a pilot program with some neighboring towns to share municipal court because we know that that is a challenge as of late. So that's something great that I've seen recently come out of Franklin. But just to bump back to, um, you know, to Warren County, uh, it, it's admirable if, if taxes are kept low. I do know that uh, Commissioner Sarnowski proposed a $5,000 raise for himself and his colleagues. And after getting heat, he voted no on it after what he actually introduced to be almost the highest paid commissioner board in the state of New Jersey for their 90 some thousand people that live in Warren County. So that was actually quite shameful. So can't really talk about holding the line and those types of things when you want to give yourself a $5,000 raise in a really difficult economic time for your residents. Okay. Mayor, we'll come to you. Sure. I think I heard Jason tell me to hang it up in this assembly race. I think he should hang it up on the commissioner board as he promised the voters of Warren County. Jason promised to serve two terms on the freeholder board. He's in his fifth. And in that time, he's raised taxes every other year. He doesn't deny it. Raised taxes seven times more than not, anyone else. I deny it. In this I deny it. It's a completely deny, Mike. As a matter of fact, you lied in your recent uh, flyer about me saying I raised the tax rate. The tax seven rate times. seven times. Tax rate has not gone up seven times. That is a complete lie, and the facts are the facts. Warren That's County's it. paying more seven it times to raise not, taxes. You don't okay. elect somebody five times if they've raised taxes, Mike. Why? Why did you break your term limits pledge? Why did you lie to the people of Chester when you told them why you did you break your term limits? Not running pledge? for assembly. Okay, I think we're gonna we're gonna. Well, unless unless each of you wants another 30 seconds on this, that's that's fine. But but I, I do want to say, you know, I, I, I do want to very quickly just bring up one of the, you know, one half of this question was wall pack. I guess nobody wants to offend the seven people in wall pack. But uh, if, if, you, if you change your mind, feel free to mention it later. Matt, we'll go to you for the next two questions. Hey, David, it's fair to say I believe wall pack should exist. And and the seven residents there have a right to to hold a township there. Okay, thank you. On account of sharing all of their services, they're not doing it on their own. It would be a different story. I don't think, any, I don't think anyone disagree with shared services there, Mike. Okay. okay, we'll go to Matt for the next two questions. Thank you, David. Um, we're going to start with Commissioner Sarnowski and then Commissioner Fantasia will respond. Writing for the majority in D.C. versus Heller, the late great Justice Antonin Scalia wrote that like most rights, the rights secured by the Second Amendment are not unlimited. It is not a right to keep and carry any weapon whatsoever in any manner whatsoever for whatever purpose. What do you believe, if any, are the Second Amendment's limits? For example, are there certain weapons or certain locations that you believe are inappropriate for civilians? 
So I believe in the right to keep and bear arms. I believe that you're allowed to uh, have any kind of uh, weapon that you can legally or could, that you can afford. Um, quite frankly, I think the restrictions on our Second Amendment rights in this state are ridiculous. And we see that the criminals are the ones that are getting the firearms, not the good people. They have trouble getting the firearms. They have trouble protecting themselves. So I'm fully uh, a Second Amendment supporter, and I am fully uh, support our right to carry concealed firearms as well. Uh, I have helped residents of Warren County not only get their concealed carry permits, but when the whole debacle was going on with the judges and the, uh, the, the prosecutors and trying to get those applications pushed through, I helped push those through, through those applications. Then they went to the police departments, so I helped when when they had uh, applications that had restrictions on them and they didn't and they weren't able to carry them over i'm helping people get those restrictions lifted on the their concealed carry i think new jersey is insane with the uh, amount of restrictions we put on our second amendment rights and i would be a fully uh, i would be a full uh, supporter of all second amendment rights and uh, i'm sure i get a 100% score from the nra as an assembly person commissioner fantasia Thank you for the question. Um, as a uh, lifetime NRA member endorsed by the Second Amendment Society and a victim of a gun crime, uh, I believe that the New Jersey laws uh, masquerade under the guise of gun safety and they fly in the face of that. We have things like the red flag laws that no longer align with probable cause and now it's just good cause to seize guns. There's an insane magazine capacity ban that does nothing but make people feel good. There's discriminatory fees now that Murphy year after year tried to hammer through. I talked about it in 2019 and, and people weren't listening and bam, he actually got it through. Um, New Jersey has three primary gun laws, right? So we have um, unlawful purpose and use, unlawful possession by carrying a handgun, um, without a permit and community gun. And what's happening is we have prosecutors who are consistently pleading down these gun charges to unlawful use. And you have community guns being passed around and used in commissions of crimes and in gang related situations. So the short answer is no restrictions. I'm a big, big supporter of constitutional carry. And if I was elected to the assembly, my first bill would be to force prosecutors to prosecute community gun and they would not be permitted to plead down these gun charges when they're used in crimes and, and in gang activity. I think it's outrageous. Murphy has done nothing to actually protect our residents. He exploits legal gun owners. It's ludicrous. You're not going to find a difference here, man. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, we're going to continue with Commissioner Fantasia here for the next question, and then uh, Mr. Akins will have the follow-up. The percentage of New Jersey homeschool students increased 400% during the 2020-2021 school year. Pandemic policies and most recently the highly sexualized curriculum um, uh, put into place by Governor Murphy seem to have been the straws that broke the the camel's back for many Garden State parents when it comes to public school attendance. My question for you My is, question for is you time is to it. abandon the concept of a brick and mortar public school system and adopt a statewide, no restrictions, go where you want to go voucher system? I am a huge, huge supporter of school choice. Uh, working again in a public charter school, I've worked with the uh, New Jersey Public Charter Schools Association uh, to advocate for parental choice. Now, what that means is not pitting charter necessarily against public, it's choosing what's best for your child. And that just may be homeschooling. That may be a magnet school, a renaissance school, uh, could be charter or traditional public. I say we do not abandon uh, traditional brick and mortar schools because some students learn better that way. I know from my own students and going through uh, the COVID restrictions, the hybrid learning, we actually had a handful of students who flour flourished in an online model. Uh, a fair amount of the students really did regress for not having that contact with one another, that day-to-day, -day, that interactions, that hands-on type of experience in a school. So again, I believe that the parents make the choice and the dollars should follow the student. The money should not go to a district. Dollars follow the student. So if the student goes elsewhere, the money follows the student. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr. Akins. 
Yeah, Matt, um, I completely agree that I think the dollars should follow the student. I, I, I'm often, oftentimes hearing stories of students that from parents that are trapped in these districts and they, they just want out. They feel like it's a it's a jail sentence because of their because of their zip code. Um, and so but I also agree that we shouldn't just abandon public schools altogether. I actually think that public schools should be afforded the ability to compete a little bit more with charter and private schools. Um, you know, you know, maybe move to, you know, a, a subject based type of school. Where they can thrive more. You know, this township over here has a wonderful public edu edu um, public school system that thrives in in engineering. This one over there does mathematics. That one does, you know, something else. I think that there's different ways to skin this cat and COVID actually opened the doors for that. You know, we saw a lot of pods happening, you know, on my school board a few years ago, I actually had two mothers that were homeschool mothers. And at first I was kind of apprehensive to, to, to get, in, you know, to find out what was going on. But when I started talking to them and finding out what they were doing, it was a very hands-on learning situation that our public schools sort of have gone away from, not because they want to, but because they can't afford it. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, so the next question, we'll start with Mr. Akins and, and go to Mayor and Gannamort. Uh, there are some people who feel the need to transition from one gender to another. Uh, and in some cases, that involves a medical procedure. Uh, do you believe that these procedures should be covered by health insurance? Uh, for children, no. Um, I, I don't believe in that whatsoever. Uh, I, I think that children should be this whole situation of gender. I, there's two genders, honestly, there's male and female, and that's it, in my opinion. And what you are born with is who you are. Um, too often, we are letting progressive policies push an agenda on our children, and it is confusing them. They're getting inundated with messages from media that this is the cool thing. This is the edgy thing to do. And what's happening to them is we're putting chemicals or they're cutting things off or they're adding things on that is irreversible. It's doing untold damage to them. And we can see um, even off of the, a bunch of the studies that the suicide rates for a lot of these folks remain the same. And it's extremely high. So there's something else that's going on where we need to address these children um, before they get to that point. And the fact that this is happening at, you know, at an acceptable rate in society today is uh, baffling to me. I've still yet been able to wrap my head around the, the origin of why this is happening. However, we're going down a very, very steep slope, and I don't know if we can claw ourselves back. Thank you. And uh, Mayor? Uh, you know, any child or adult, for that matter, who is confused about their gender, um, deserves our prayers and our well wishes and a conversation with their family, trusted loved ones, and perhaps faith leaders. Um, no, I do not believe that uh, the state of New Jersey or health insurers should be paying for uh, any of these types of surgeries. And as Josh said, that's especially true, true of children. Uh, I uh, would be very concerned about putting young kids on a path to um, effectively mutilate their bodies in a permanent way. You do hear from uh, young people who've grown up and regret that enormously. It's a, it's a tragic situation, and I do not believe that the state uh, or medical providers should be involved in that respect. Worse yet, I read on, uh, I heard on 101.5 today that the state of New Jersey is going to be paying for gender transition for inmates in New Jersey prisons. I was waiting for the question, what we're going to cut in the state budget. I'd start right there. That's an absurd expense. New Jersey taxpayers should not be on the hook for gender reassignment for convicted felons. Thank you. And we're going to stick with Mayor and Gandamore for this next question. And then Commissioner Sanofsky, you're going to have the opportunity to respond. Warehouse sprawl is an increasingly popular topic at public meetings around the state. Uh, you hope to represent one of New Jersey's more rural, and I'm sure you won't disagree, uh, aesthetically attractive districts. It's a beautiful part of our state. Is warehouse sprawl and overdevelopment generally a problem? And if so, what could you do from Trenton to help combat it? Yeah, great question, Matt. Uh, it certainly is a problem. I grew up in Sussex County, uh, love the charm of Sussex County, the wide open spaces. It's part of the reason why I live in Chester today. It reminds me a whole heck of a lot of Sussex County. As I said earlier in the debate, half of our uh, 31 square miles are preserved open space. I want to keep it that way. I like to see our rolling hills. I like to see our farmland. I don't particularly care to see a warehouse there. Um, how do we go about that? Um, 
you know, there's the carrot and the stick. Let me speak about the carrot. I think we should incentivize and promote small business in this state once again. I think about the struggling downtowns in Newton or Andover Borough or even Chester Borough. I think what those small businesses, primarily retail uh, shops, could use is some tax relief from the state of New Jersey. I think we should make the first $50,000 of small business income tax-free in the state of New Jersey. Imagine what that would do for our small businesses in this district's 32 towns. I think the way out of this to preserve our pristine, beautiful farmland, our beautiful open space and fresh air is to do what we can to encourage people to buy local and buy small, buy small business that is. Let's make the first 50 grand of small business income tax-free. Thank you, Commissioner Sonarski. Yeah, warehousing is a very important issue in our region, and the Highlands uh, Act is one of the reasons why it destroyed our land values. So now these big developers come in, hide up these, this land, and they throw warehousing. The biggest problem is the impact it has not only on the host municipality, but neighboring municipalities. And one of the things we have in New Jersey is home rule. So a host municipality could put something up, do uh, land use and zoning, and they'll have a warehouse, and then it'll have long uh, wide-ranging impact, not only on their municipality, but other municipalities. So one of the things we could do in the legislature and that they don't do right now is make sure that we pass laws that say that the communities that are next to each other have to communicate. They have to work together on their land use and development so that they're not necessarily being overburdened by another community's land use and development, such as warehousing. We're dealing with that in Warren County with truck traffic. We're creating truck plans to get the roads off our local roads and onto state and federal highways where they belong. Um, and then the other thing we could do is, for from a countywide standpoint, have developers pay for fair share in not only in the host municipality, but outside the host municipality, so that we're improving the roads outside the municipality, uh, host municipality. They don't have to do that right now. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're going to stick with Commissioner Sarnowski for, for this question, and then I'll go to Mayor in Ganimort. Uh, uh, this, is, this is a state issue. Assemblyman John McKeon has introduced legislation uh, that would codify the U.S. Supreme Court's loving decision into state law. Uh, do you support or oppose that bill? You're going to have to be uh, more specific. I'm not familiar. I'm sorry. Sure. So, the, so the Supreme Court's loving decision uh, 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 legalized bi, uh, biracial marriage in the oh. United States. And, uh, uh, and there is a bill right now in the New Jersey State Assembly uh, that is seeking to codify that decision into state law. Personally, I believe in the marriage of one man, one woman, um, and, you know, that could be any man and any woman. Um, and I think marriage is a religious thing where uh, the government comes in is recognizing that two people have decided to share their lives together and then sharing those governmental uh, rights um, and should not be imposed upon. But as far as the, you know, the codifying of what is marriage, uh, why is government getting involved in that? That's a personal choice. Once again, government is overstepping constantly into our religious liberties, our social liberties to tell us how to act, how to believe, how to, uh, you know, live our social life. And quite frankly, I don't think that's what we need to do. We are a good, just society. We care about our fellow man. We are not prejudiced. We are not racist. We are not... Uh, any of the is isms or isks that uh, I like to say that the woke left like to put on us whenever we don't agree with their woke agenda. Um, so I don't see the need to codify anything. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have no problem with biracial marriage, and I'm not sure anything else needs to be said about it. Okay, thank you. And we're we're actually coming coming toward the end of the debate. We've gone through the 16 questions. I, I do want to. If it's okay with 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 Matt. I just I just want to ask one thing that I had intent hoped to have asked earlier. Uh, if the four of you are fortunate enough to to serve in the state assembly next year, uh, uh, the minority leader, uh, the current minority leader, John DeMeo, uh, he'll either uh, assumingly run for speaker or minority leader. He had a close election uh, last time. I, I just want to quickly ask all four yes or no on a commitment for DeMeo for the top leadership position. So we'll start with Mayor Ganimort. 
Uh, I think John DeMeo does a good job. I'd be happy to support him for speaker. And let's go to Mr. Akins and then Mr. Sarnaski since you're sharing, sharing a screen. I thought, I'm a yes on that. Yeah, absolutely. I've been a friend of John's for a long time. Uh, and, uh, you know, I would support John. And Commissioner Fantasia? Unequivocally, 100%. What an amazing thing to have our uh, assembly leader be from Warren County and have our current Senate leader from Sussex County. We have brought things back up north, and that's where I'd like to see them stay. Thank you. So <laughs> the winner clearly is John DeMeo. He's got uh, a big correct. smile tonight. Got, got two votes out of the 24th District, no matter what. Uh, I'm going to uh, turn this over to Matt. I, I know he's got a cleanup question, and then and then we'll go to closing. So we also referenced this question at the beginning of the debate. This is an opportunity if your running mate said anything that you want to disagree with or feel you need to disagree with, uh, this, is, this is your opportunity. So um, I'm working from the right side of my screen to the left, Commissioner Fantasia. Well, if I am uh, limited to say there is anything that Mayor Inganamort said that I disagree with, I would have to tell you, no, there's not one thing I disagree with. I'm proud of him. I think that we are aligned. I think that, um, again, Parker Space, myself and Mike Inganamort, we make one hell of a team and we're going to be proud to represent the 24th District. Mayor Inganamort. Yeah, I completely agree. There's a reason Don Fantasia, Parker Space, and I are running together with the support of Senator Oraho, Assemblyman Worth, Senator Bucco, Assemblyman Ber Bergen, the New Jersey Second Amendment Society, the New Jersey Outdoor Alliance, uh, and the support of grassroots leaders up and down this district. Uh, we have the same conservative values. Commissioner Sarnowski. No, I'm proud to be running with uh, real conservative Josh Akins, uh, who has done such a good job getting school board members elected all around the state. He's a real genuine good person a family man who just wants to make a difference he doesn't care about politics uh he just wants to make a difference for the people of new jersey sweet thank that you sweet and mr akins no i absolutely am so proud to run with jason the man gives every bit of effort in everything that he does he's given warren county so much of his time so much of his his heart and soul and i know he's going to do the same in the assembly when we win Okay, we're ending on a harmonious note here. Hmm. So well we're going to go to closing. We're going to go to closing statements, and uh, Mayor and Ganimore is going to give the the first close, and that'll be followed by Mr. Akins. Great. Thank you so much, David and Matt. You know, since Parker Space, Don Fantasia and I formed a ticket a few months ago, we've been on the receiving end of daily vicious attacks from Josh, Jason, and their campaign blog, attacking our physical appearance, our jobs, and even our family members. Today, they attacked Dawn for a personal crisis in her life and then called us racists later in the day. People in this district are shocked at how low they have gone. Now we know why. Josh and Jason have some things they don't want to talk about. Josh is an Obama-Biden supporter, a former registered Democrat, said on a recent survey he's so-so on the NRA and bragged last month about electing Democrats in New Jersey. He even voted for Phil Murphy's plan that put preschoolers in masks. Jason Sarnowski is on both sides of every issue. He says he doesn't like ESG, but works for a company that preaches it. They're even the ones connecting the wind turbines down the shore. He calls for cutting taxes, but raised them seven times in Warren County, more than anyone else in this race. He says he's against the gas tax, but takes all the money. He pledged to serve two terms. He's in his fifth. He rails against the establishment, but he's been serving in government longer than any of us. It turns out the candidates vote that are telling voters they are really conservative are really frauds. In contrast, Parker Space, Don Fantasia, and Mike and Ganimort, we offer the real thing, a bold and conservative plan to get New Jersey back on track. Repeal the extreme sex ed standards, cut taxes across the board, oppose the wasteful spending, defend our constitutional rights, protect the unborn, and stand with our police. There is a better way for New Jersey, but to get there, we need conservative Republicans who tell the truth. That's Parker Space, Don Fantasia, and Mike and Ganimort, we ask for your vote. Thank you. And we'll go to uh, Commissioner Sarnowski. Thank you, David. Elections are ma about making clear difference between yourself and your opponents. And I think Josh and I have done that today. We are the real conservatives. And where Mike and Dawn keep calling us the liars, 
They're the ones lying about their record and trying to hide it. They've done it constantly by changing their websites, by deleting their Twitter uh, likes to hide the fact that they were never Trumpers. Mike deleted a tweet from 2016 in October when Donald Trump was our president-elect saying that he was the biggest threat to our Republican uh, Party. Uh, this is what they do. They hide from you uh, because they don't want you to know that that Dawn is a gas tax uh, Dawn. She wants to raise, she wants to continue the gas tax. She's constantly raised taxes. Not only that, she complains that she talks about my budget. She has nowhere to go with my budget. She should stick with her own budget. When I say her own budget, I don't mean Sussex County. I mean her personal budget because she's being sued by multiple credit card companies for not paying her own debt. So Dawn's got to get her own house in order before she starts talking about Warren County. She's deeply entrenched with special interest groups like the 825. Mayor Mike in Ganimore constantly has raised taxes in Chester Township. He's got a brand new $400 garbage tax, and he's significantly raising taxes this year. Not only that, they both stood with groups that are pushing the garbage in our schools. Dawn was sworn in to office by Tom Prohl, who is the founder of Garden State Equality, who authored the garbage in our schools. Two year ago, years ago, Mike... Uh, was the deciding vote on flying the pride flag in Chester Township. Today, we're fighting Sparta to make sure that only the American flag is flown in our government buildings. Josh and I are the real tax-cutting, parental uh, parent-supporting, uh, children-protecting conservatives in this rate, race. We don't re represent the establishment. We represent the people. And it, it, the establishment in Trenton has forgotten you. We won't. So go to AkinsForNewJersey.com uh, and SarnowskiForAssembly.com uh, to learn more about me and Josh. We're asking for your vote June 6th. We deserve it, guys. Thank you. Okay, thank you to all four candidates. Um, I don't think it can be understated. Um, even though debates are important, candidates don't always agree to do them. So I think it's a credit to all four of you. You subjected yourselves not just to David and I tonight, but also um, you, you showed that you're willing to be accountable to your constituents. So thank you for joining us. Um, I also want to, of course, thank uh, my co-moderator and debate organizer, David Wildstein. Pleasure to do it with you. Once again, Mr. Wildstein, um, and um, being the election guru you are, you'll correct me if I get these dates wrong, but I think they're important to repeat. Remember, there are three ways to vote in New Jersey this year. You can vote in person on June 6th. You can vote early from June 2nd to June 4th. Vote by mail. Uh, you can do that. Deadline to request it by mail is May 30th, and then in person on June 5th. So no excuses to not show up. Um, and, and then last but not least, a uh, shameless plug for future primary programming here. Um, there will be an LD3 Senate debate uh, this weekend, Sunday, the 30th of April at 8.30 p.m., moderated by myself on Philadelphia's 1210 WPHT. You can either listen on the radio, stream it on the OSC app, or you can get it on our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com backslash at 1210 WPHT. And then if you haven't had enough of myself and Mr. Wildstein, you can return next week, May 2nd at 9 p.m. We'll be hosting an LD4 Senate debate between the two primary combatants, Chris Del Barello, who's a former Washington Township Councilman, and Nick DeSilvio, an incumbent Gloucester County Commissioner. We hope to see you then. But for now, again, thank you for tuning in. Thank you to all our participants and have a great evening. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, everybody.